We will be looking at TensorBoard today. It is a tool that allows you to debug the issues with neural network. It is also helpful in tracking and visualizing metrics such as loss and accuracy. This is an official TensorFlow, TensorFlow a page for TensorBoard. And TensorBoard is a tool that comes with TensorFlow. So you don't have to do a separate installation for it. Now in the same deep learning series, uh, one of the videos that we had was building a neural network for recognizing handwritten digits. So I'm gonna take the same notebook that we had. So this is the same notebook where you load all this data set, handwritten digits, and then you train it using a neural network. And in this neural network, there was a flattened layer then there was one hidden layer with 100 neurons and the third layer had 10 output neurons 10 is like basically 0 to 9 and we have already done this coding so if you're not seen the that video please go in this same deep learning series and watch that video because that video is a prerequisite so we have done all of this in that previous video and now we are at a point where we want to look into some of the internals of uh, this neural network so let me execute this code once again so if you want to execute all the cells in the Jupyter notebook you can say run all the cells so that way I am running all the cells and here what's happening is I'm running five epoch and with every epoch it is showing me the loss and accuracy for my uh, training data set now I came up with this parameters, but you might want to try it with different parameters. For example, instead of Adam, I want to try SGD, okay? And when you try SGD, you see like here with Adam, I get 0 0.98 in the end, but with SGD, you might get a different type of loss and different behavior of your neural network. So here you got 0 0.92 and we are using very less epochs only five but there might be a case where you might have to run less a thousand epoch and you like r reading these numbers might not be that visually appealing so it will be very nice if we have some kind of visualization or graphical representation which tells you how much your accuracy is going up or your loss loss is going down per epoch okay so if we have that kind of nice graph uh, that might be better and TensorBoard provides that. TensorBoard provides some other functionality as well, but that's uh, one of the functionality that it provides. So let's uh, try it out and see how the whole thing works. So the first thing you need to do is uh, go to the directory. So here I have some old logs file, so I'm just gonna remove it. So this is my current working directory. In here, I am going to create a tensorflow callback it, it is a tensor board callback okay so this is how it looks so here is the log directory to save all your logs and this is your callback so I will just call it tensor board callback and that you supply in your fit function so here you will say callbacks is equal to TB callback and what happens is when tensorflow is running the training it will use this callback and it will supply all this information per epoch to TB callback and that will put that information or it will log all those events in this logs directory so in my current working directory where I have this notebook I will see logs directory and that will have all the events okay so let's run it once so in order to run it let me just run all the cells so that way we start fresh and we have a clean slate and i'm running sgd which is a stochastic gradient descent this is something we have discussed again in the previous tutorial so please follow the entire uh, series before you come to this video okay so now it has recorded into tb callback so how do you exactly visualize it so for visualization you can uh, go to the prompt here I have my git bash and here you can run this command 
So it is saying that run tensor board with this logs directory and you will notice that now I have this logs directory. It has all the logs. Okay. So when you run it, it's going to run this UI on this particular URL and you can see here that it launched the tensor board. Now the other way of launching this tensor board is by using this command. So if you use, for example, if you just want to launch it within Jupyter Notebook, you can launch it like this. So we can try it and it will render it at the bottom, but it will be similar to what you see here. And I pref prefer rendering it in a separate browser URL. So here what you're seeing is how your accuracy is increasing per epoch. Okay. So let's see here. So this is training and this is just smoothening of the curve and let me just expand it. So at step number one, my accuracy was 0 0.9028. You see the 0 0.9028? So let's see. You see 0 0.9028, then 0 0.91, 0 0.92, 0 0.9325. 0 so you see all of that, see? This one is 91, 0 0.92, 0 0.993 actually. 9325, 9325. You see, so these values are matching with the values that you see in this column. Also for loss, we started with 0 0.8938, went to 0 0.24455. So here with the loss, you can click here to, to kind of fit the graph or you can click here to kind of make it bigger. So let me make this graph bigger. And you will see that we started at some point, then 0 0.35, 0 0.3, 0 0.26, and 0.24. See, 0.2426. So this is just a graphical representation of how your loss is reducing and your accuracy is increasing. Okay. Here it timed out maybe because I have this other thing running. So just, I'm not gonna worry about it. I have it running okay here. The other parameters that it has are graphs. So if you look at graphs, um, by the way, I, I ran it multiple times. That's why you are seeing multiple graphs, but you can, um, as such, you will see only one graph. So let, let, let's just uh, do it all over again because I don't want to see that multiple graph because those might be confusing. So I will, what I will do, is I will stop the execution here. By the way, I'm just running everything from scratch, okay? And what I will do is I will also stop my Jupyter Notebook. So my kernel is shut down. And uh, I'll just restart it again. Okay, so restarting this one and I will say run basically everything. So if you do run all cells, it's gonna just run all the commands from scratch and I want to see TensorBoard after it has run everything. So once it is done, you can do run this command and it should open up TensorBoard once again. So localhost this and now when I look at graphs, I see only one graph. So scalars is the same thing that we saw before. Okay, I see multiple charts here. All right, I don't know what's going on with this one, but we'll just go straight to graph. So in the graph, what you see is the inner representation of your neural network. So in the neural network, you will notice that there is 28 by 28 shape for the image that we are feeding. So you saw that in the first network, our input shape was 28 by 28. That was followed by a dense network with 100 neurons, ReLU as activation function. So you will see that if you click on this plus icon, 
you will see that you got this uh, flattening layer so when you feed 28 by 28 into flatten layer it will convert it to 784 uh, like single dimension array and that is fed into this dense network and you know in any neural network it has every neuron has two components weighted sum and then activation function so weighted sum is matrix multiplication here and we also add a bias and then we have ReLU as an activation function so you will see 784 was fed here then there was a matrix multiplication then there was addition of bias again all this theory we have seen in our previous video so it should be clear and then you see dense similarly if you double click here then you see what's going on in that layer so in that layer I have 10 output neurons activation is sigmoid so here you will see my activation is sigmoid output neurons are 10 and again there is matrix multiplication and bias uh, going on okay if you go to histogram chart histogram will show you the weights basically here what you have is bias and here you what you have is kernel all the weights and these are each run we ran five epochs so this is epoch one two three four five and it is showing the distribution histogram you all know right histogram is just a frequency distribution so it is showing the frequency distribution of all your weights so for this value you have 49 weights for example uh, if you look at bias uh, for bias you will have dense one and dense four and dense five so let's see so in the we have dense one so in the dense one bias will have 10 uh, output values so that's what you'll see here so these kind of visualization helps you debug the issues right now our neural network is very simple in real life scenarios you'll have much complex neural network and at that point uh, using TensorFlow can really become handy and you can debug various things with it. One of the other thing you can do is you can, let's say I tried this with SGD. Now I want to try it with, let's say Adam. Okay, and when I try it with Adam, I want to do one thing which is I want to maybe store it in a separate directory. So for Adam, I will just say, let's store that in logs Adam, okay? And then for SGD, I will just store it in logs SGD. So that way I have like two separate directories. So here I will say SGD, SGD. I want to check performance of both the optimizer. I want to see visualization of what these two optimizers are doing, optimizers are doing. Okay, so then what I can do is just say refresh here. And here it is showing you different runs, okay? So I'm just gonna uncheck this and check the two latest run that I had. You see, I had Adam and SGD as a run just recently. So I'm unclicking this and comparing these two and you will notice here how these two are behaving. So my Adam, which is blue is obviously better than SGD. See the accuracy is increasing and the loss is also decreasing faster. So this way you can compare uh, two different optimizer or two different uh, hyperparameters. So by the way, uh, here optimizer, matrix, epoch, learning rate, these are called hyperparameters. And the parameters are nothing but the values of weights basically the weights and biases are called parameters and these guys are called hyperparameters because they control those parameters they affect those parameters that's why they are called hyperparameters so i hope this video was useful you got some understanding of tensorboard in the future video we'll be covering uh, more detailed aspects of tensorboard all right so if you're liking this series so far uh, give it a thumbs up share it with your friends i'm gonna come up with many more tutorials in this series thank you for watching